Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're working on a little bit of flower bed maintenance, maybe a tiny bit of seed starting. It is Sunday. Um, decided to come out though and get a little bit of maintenance work done because it is supposed to be really crummy tomorrow. We have a wind advisory for this evening, like, well, I guess technically tomorrow morning, 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. 40 mile an hour steady winds with 60 mile an hour gusts, and then it's supposed to maintain like around 30 to 40 mile an hour winds for all day tomorrow, which is the worst. Wind is the worst, and I hate to work out in it. So I thought, you know what, let's get out today. It's still 75 degrees um, and let's do some stuff. So I want to start by showing you how I cut back my Proudberry Coralberry shrub because this is the time to do it right now and they do require a very hard cut back in order to set the best fruit every year and that's kind of what we're planting these for. Um, and then we've got some just general maintenance that I'm going to do right nearby it and then possibly start one of my last batches of seed. We'll see. And Benjamin is out here keeping me company. Well and Russell of course. They're buds. They play really well together. Okay, so in this flower bed here, you can see the Proudberry Coralberry right there. Uh, it is a shrub that grows three to four feet tall and wide, which you can see, I mean, it's pretty much at its max size right there, which is perfect. Sighted that one perfectly. I love it when that happens. <laughs> Nothing's too crowded in there. Um, it's a zone three through seven, and they produce, well, you can see the berries from last year. They held all winter and held their color for a lot of the winter, actually. Uh, but the most beautiful pink berries. They bloom on new wood and set their fruit on new wood. So what you wanna do is cut the whole shrub back to about 12 inches above the ground in the spring once you see new growth starting. And then at that time you can cut out any dead wood as well. But if we get in close here, I'll show you the new growth. Find a shady spot where we can see it. See the new buds right there? So it's showing new growth. We can see easily what's dead and what's not. So anyway, it's really not that difficult. You just go in and cut it back. So let's just get that done. Um, I'm going to be pulling a bunch of grass from around it. Got like Bermuda grass right here, which is the worst. I know some of you guys like grow it as lawns, right? In warmer climates. It's a weed here for us and it's so hard to get rid of because it spreads like this underneath the grass and I don't want to spray in this area. Anyway, we'll get it all pulled. Oh yes. What are you doing all day, mama? <laughs> are you filming me right now? Well, Benjamin, I'm pulling some Bermuda grass. See, this is a weed. See how it grows? I'm going to put that in the book. Yes, perfect. Thanks, bud. Are you pruning back some sedum? Oh yeah, you can prune that. Go for it. Kind of the wrong, there we go. Great job. Do you hear our chickens in there, Benjamin? Is that hard work? I have to do this. Oh, great job. I just left the big one off. Yeah. Okay, so I'll cut this back and then we'll take a closer look. cut back isn't that crazy how different it is and it does look so harsh and it seems like the wrong thing to do to a woody shrub but with this type they just benefit from a harsh cut back and then they can grow back fresh and you get a nice set of pink berries and I know many of you have these in your garden or have planted them recently so I just wanted to show you what I'm doing with mine and now is the time of year to do it. I went ahead and gave it some rose tone fertilizer because I do have two other roses in this flower bed. I think there's just two left that I need to cut back and fertilize. And the rest of this area, I've got a few things to cut back. We've got super tunias here to pull from last year. And then I've got some Veronica white wands in here. You can see the scraggly old growth and it's got brand new fresh green growth there at the base. Can you see that? It's so exciting as does the sedum right here. See all that new growth? So we're gonna cut all the tops off. And I think the only thing else in this bed we've got to deal with are the butterfly bushes there toward the end that we'll uh, trim back. 
And then we're gonna head this direction and do a little bit of trimming. So I'm gonna whip through this flower bed and then I'll give you a tour through what we did. Then we'll head over to the other area. Well, we are ready for a fresh layer of mulch in this flower bed. So I've got the supertunias pulled. There's the coral berry looking nice and tidy. The roses as well, they've been cut back by at least half, uh, thinned out, and I did fertilize those as well. I cut back the Veronica. There are four of them right in here. And then also the sedum. I did fertilize the Veronica, but you never want to fertilize sedum. It can make it flop. It really does not like fertilizer. Um, and then I just trimmed up this landscape rose, which this is a type that you don't really have to do much to. You can see it's fairly young. Um, I cut a few dead branches out and a few lanky stems, but that's pretty much it. So I was taking a look at this next section where the butterfly bush is, and there's actually a, several things we need to do. I need to cut back and clean up this climbing rose. I have not put up a trellis or any kind of system to train it to the fence yet. I probably won't do that today, but it's something on the list. There's some hookahs I need to clean up in here. Hookahs, there's fresh growth in them. They never fare our winters looking very good here. Um, hardy geranium, kind of a ground cover type. It's kind of smothering the daffodils there. I'll just kind of clean that up, trim it, and rake it. And then down toward this area, you can see there's a caryopteris, which we're gonna also cut back today, and then our butterfly bush here, which we want to encourage both of them to stay down and to bloom where we can see them. Um, they both bloom on new wood. So what we're gonna do is for the caryopteris, we're going to cut it back just to above a set of strong looking buds. And you can see there's new growth right there. Um, so we just wanna give it a nice trim to keep it compact and looking good. Uh, same goes for the butterfly bush. So I did just recently touch on butterfly bush pruning, but just in short, it's a good idea to do because they do bloom um, on new wood. Uh, so especially for really tall varieties, to keep uh, the blooms at a level where you can see them, you need to cut them back because otherwise they become plants that they refer to them as second story plants in that their blooms are just like at the very top to be top of the plant where the new growth is. So if you trim it back and let that new growth be lower in the plant, then um, you'll be able to enjoy the blooms. Kind of the same thing for the caryopteris in a way, but caryopteris don't get as big as butterfly bushes. So this one right here, I've got two. So there's this one. One of them's a Miss Violet, one of them's a Miss Ruby. This one's clearly shorter. It gets morning sun. This one's way taller and it does this every year. This one gets afternoon sun. Kind of interesting. But you can see a bunch of uh, leaves that have already pushed on the top there. But I want to take this down. Probably, you can see last year I took it down to about here. Um, I think I want to take it down maybe even a little further than that. Okay, so I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to whip through this flower bed and then I'll show you what they look like in the end.
right, so this area looks a lot better. Cleaned up the rose right there, cleaned up the hookara. This area is ready for mulch. I always love it when we can come in and cover all the drip tubing so we don't see that anymore. Got the hardy geraniums cleaned up. Hopefully you guys can see the detail. I know it's kind of hard. The fence is casting the perfect shadows to make it kind of weird. And then I did a pretty hard cut back on the caryopteris right there and on the butterfly bush. I typically don't go that low with the butterfly bush, but it needed it. It needed kind of a rejuvenation prune. Um, Caryopteris will be great right there. And then the other butterfly bush, I took that down, back by about half or so. Got some really nice peonies in here coming up. Coral charm, look at that exciting okay so I was gonna be working in this area right over here by the Hebe statue but Aaron just irrigated that whole area we just turned our water on yesterday so we've been really like deeply saturating everything especially with that wind that's coming our way and Aaron just called me and told me one that Samantha's still napping I actually just ran out here after she went down I put her down for a nap and I'm hoping I can get my seeds started and my seeds protected in the new cut flower garden before she wakes up but um, Aaron's holding down the fort inside but anyway he also asked me if I was almost done back here because this is the next zone he's gonna irrigate so I need to get out of here <laughs> so I don't get all wet so I think what we'll do now is run out to the cut flower garden we're going to put landscape fabric over the top of all the new seeds I just put in the ground I had no idea when I did that that we had a huge windstorm coming our way and if I don't protect them somehow or even at least try I mean I'll kick myself you know I don't know they'd probably be fine I just think that they're gonna dry out so much if I don't put something over the top so I'm gonna go unload the trailer grab some bricks landscape fabric and we'll head and do that before we plant our seeds I think I just saw a dog hey this is our neighbor dog right here come here doesn't mind me at all what's up buddy uh, he just ran a different direction. I don't know where he went. Maybe he's going back home. Oh, there, yep, there he is. There he is, over there. Uh huh. <laughs> do you not know what to do with yourself? Well, you're in a safe place, I think. I don't know who he belongs to. Okay, Benjamin, we gotta go take this trailer load o over. This should be interesting. I'm super glad I loaded it like that. Butterfly bush right up in my business. Yeah, he'll probably come back around. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, look who's looking quite cozy on the bricks. What are you doing, Cheddar? I bet those are nice and warm, aren't they? <laughs> you are a funny boy. We just loaded up with landscape fabric and bricks and Benjamin told me he had to go back and get one more tool for me not to move. Oh my, what'd you find? Got some, got some tools? This one is heavy. Is it? We got some fertilizer and some insecticidal soap. Good job, buddy. Right there, okay, get some more tools. Right there. Okay, one more load, all right? Oh my word. Look at you. Even got a steak. Where are your sunnies? Did you leave them inside? Are you okay without them? Okay. Alright guys, so here it is. We've already got a piece here because um, I'm trying to keep some darkness going for some of the seeds to germinate and same on the other end. So there's actually still part of the roll left attached to that last piece and I'm hoping it's long enough to span the rest of this like gap here. And then I brought another roll to put over this second um, run of drip tubing. Anyway, we've got to water it all in really well first and then hopefully it stays. This might prove to be completely not worth the time but when you put all that work into planting stuff, you want to see it germinate. So anyway, it feels good to at least try. Ugh. I'll help you get it started. Okay, now can you push it all the way up? Good job. It's super efficient watering right there, Benjamin. Yep.
I am hoping that that helps. I ended up grabbing all four of the obelisks because when I rolled this piece out right here, the wind took it like a kite up in the air. I thought I was gonna lose the piece just with the light breeze that we have right now. So it gave me a visual of what would be going on when those gusts of wind were just cruising through here. So anyway, I used every single brick I brought out and then all four obelisks and I wet the whole thing down. And it's quite possible that the seeds would be completely fine without my intervention. It'd probably be worse if my plants were up just a little bit like little tender seedlings um, and nothing has sprouted yet so that's good I just know that when I go to bed tonight and I hear those big wind gusts I will feel a lot better and sleep better knowing that I tried my best to keep these seeds moist <laughs> and I did just hear from Aaron he said Samantha Grace woke up so I'm gonna run inside and hang out with her for a little while and I may or may not make it back out to the studio to start seeds um, when she goes down again she usually takes three good naps in a day um, so we'll see. If not, I'm really happy with getting that one flower bed done and just kind of buttoning that up a little bit. And then, you know, having the knowledge that this is kind of tucked in out here. So anyway, if I don't make it back out to the studio, thank you for watching this video. And I will definitely capture the seeds starting later on because I'm starting uh, things like tomatoes, uh, pincushion flowers, uh, what else, mignonette. There's a couple corn cockle, I think is one of them. Some things that I'm not even familiar with. So anyway, whether or not I do that in this video or the next one, I'll still try to capture it for you. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Bye. So the wind has started up and Aaron said that I'm losing my landscape fabric out here. Yep, it is blowing across the property. Dang it. <laughs> foot piece of landscape fabric in heavy winds. I'm gonna drag it to our barn. Oh my goodness, I cannot even believe that that just happened. I mean, I can kind of believe it. I can believe anything of the wind around here. And I really wish that you could have seen what just happened, but a tail of the uh, fabric got loose on my way in and it wrapped around one of my pots by the chicken coop and knocked it over. And apparently I was dragging a brick the whole way too, because why not? At this point, if I lose those seeds, I'm gonna be a little TO'd, I'm not gonna lie. Maybe I was not destined to have early spring flower crops. I feel like I need to brush my teeth now, full of dust. <laughs>